Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is G and this is Spilling the Tea with G. Today, I'll be reacting to an Instagram live conversation happening between a newer representative and a more experienced representative of the MLM Monate. I think for once I actually said their name right. When I first saw this video, I was troubled to see so many similarities to cult-like behavior. So I wanted to make this video to address that issue and to show that MLMers are still using the pandemic and people's loneliness as a way to recruit them and convince them to join. If you enjoy watching this kind of content, please stay and watch the video. If you like it, let me know in the comments. I'm so excited to do this live with you. Me too. I haven't done one, one with you, so. <laughs> For anyone who does not know me watching this on this page, hi. I'm, I'll do a quick one too on me. And then I kind of wanted to do like, I wanted to get to know you a little bit on camera. And I want some of your following me hear your story. So I think it's so freaking cool. Um, but for those of you guys who do not know me, hello, my name is I have been with our company now for almost two years. Um, I actually started my business two years back as a side hustle i was really just kind of excited to make 200 300 maybe one day 400 500 bucks and fast forward two years i i matched my day job income i quit my job i work my business full time um so i'm, I'm it's really really cool for me getting to work with someone like you who you were nervous you weren't really sure if this is for you in the beginning you're like i don't know can i do this is this for me and like you are kicking ass in every sense of the way so i kind of want to hop on here and i want you to do a quick one two on your story so what were you doing for work most recently and or currently okay um there's some mlm speak in there gonna do a quick one two let me do a quick one two on what just happened at the beginning of this video so this Instagram live is actually happening on the Top Girls account, um, and she is the person who is newer to the MLM. And then the bottom girl joined her, and since she's wearing a hat, I'll probably just refer to as her as Hat Girl for the rest of the video. Hat Girl comes on, and she seems like she's more experienced in the MLM, and she kind of just immediately takes over and is kind of guiding the conversation. So I wonder if, um, you know, if the Instagram live was really the, the top girl's idea or if this was something that she was told that she has to do and she has to set up. And similar to the teacher that we reacted to in one of my previous videos, that teacher said, you know, you just host it, you invite your friends and I'll go and I'll do all the talking. So that is kind of giving me similar vibes to what we're seeing right now. Um, well, I work full time at the Toronto face mask company as a production manager and graphic designer. Um, yeah, it's a big role. It's, it's honestly like a lot of work. It's fast paced. And I have like so many different roles and I'm like one person. So I'm constantly like overworking myself. And like, I spend really long hours at the office. And especially since it's COVID and face masks are in right now, like the business is booming. Yeah. Um, so what's really sad there is that the top girl whose instagram live this is who's newer to the company she's already working a full-time job and she already has other responsibilities within that full-time job it sounds like she's wearing a lot of different hats and now in addition to that she's getting herself into this business which will only take away more time from her and i don't know if she will get the same kind of return on it so it's just really sad when somebody is already working so hard and doing so much for them then to get involved with something like this. Oh, I don't know. But like, you know, as you know, I'm making good money and whatnot, but I still like, obviously you want to grow and you want to do more. And I actually met Jenna on Bumble. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love Bumble. Like, you know, right they, have, they have the BFF thing. Yep. Um, like, I honestly like, Lost time. She met that person on Bumble. And in case you're not sure, Bumble is a social media app where you go on there and you just get connected with like minded people and you can make friendships on there. So that, ugh, I don't like that at all. Lost touch with a lot of my friends 
in the past few years and like especially during covid it was really like it was really lonely and especially here like things are still closed i still haven't seen anybody like i've seen a couple of my friends but um you know what i mean so yeah, you know i'm like okay you want to go on exactly let me hop on see who i meet and then i met jenna like i saw her do her thing for like a few weeks actually like almost a month and I'm like hmm, this seems cool like I wonder what she's doing and then she actually reached out to me and I'm like you know what like what do I got to lose let me just try it you know yeah so the girl who she met on Bumble who they also after that connected on other social media accounts it sounds like she was cunning enough to add her on social media but not immediately pounce on her as a potential prospect she waited a few months, and then, like she just said, she reached out to her, and the top girl was like, well, what do I have to lose? And now it's been like, what, this is my third week doing it, and it's actually so much fun. I've met so many amazing women, like, like you guys are just amazing. You guys make me feel good every day. Like, I wake up, like, super positive and super happy, because I see, like, our group chat just, like, you know, gassing everyone up, and I'm like, this is these are the people I need in my life. <laughs> that makes my heart. First off, I think the top girl is like the sweetest person ever. She just seems really, really nice. Um, she has a good job. She has been following COVID guidelines. She's been being safe. She hasn't been hanging out with her friends. Um, but in my opinion, it seems like maybe she is lacking in some authentic friendships or some social relationships. And I think that might have made her especially vulnerable to getting involved in a pyramid scheme because, like she said, she really, really enjoys the community aspect and the group chat and the the gassing up that happens or the support that happens. And while it does feel great to have a group chat and have a bunch of people who are sending you emojis and hashtag bus babes all day long, you have to remember that when it's happening in an MLM, it's not that they really care about you and they really are your friends. They are trying to give you that attention and give you that support and acceptance so that you'll stay, so that you'll be more pliable to following their rules so that you won't step out of line. And again, the top girl just seems like the sweetest girl ever, so I just, I just feel sad for her that she got involved with an MLM. So happy. I love hearing that because I, I really do. I think our community is so different, right? It's, it's a feel good community in every sense of the way. I want to ask what were like, your expectations? Like, what did you think this would be? Well, obviously, we hear so many stories about like, people trying and failing when selling products and whatnot. I know a lot of people who have tried it as well. And they didn't really get far. But Theirs was also like you'd have to hold inventory and you'd have to go door to door or like, you know, stuff like that. And they didn't really have like a community like we do. Mm -hmm. And um, it was more like in person things like I got like a lot of people were like discouraging me at first. Like my my family was, too. And, you know, like I get it. But honestly, like I kept telling them if I don't try, I'll never know. Like I honestly don't have anything to lose. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness, I don't have anything to lose. Okay, let's do a quick one-two on everything that just happened here. So she had her friends and family who were trying to dissuade her from joining. But because this MLM had such a strong community and because the business is done online and because it's not in person, she decided to just give it a shot. And she just said she has nothing left to lose you know, she still has her full-time job, so she's going to be okay. But my heart breaks for her because, in my opinion, she seems more excited by the promise of friendship and by the promise of community. And this is the ideal type of recruit that MLMs will go for because even when they don't make money or potentially worse, when they end up losing money, they'll be so blinded by the relationships that they've already made so they won't see the true situation that they've already gotten themselves into. And then one more point about the friends and family who tried to warn her. I'm just imagining into the future, after this sweet girl has tried to sell the products or recruit her friends and family member to join, they're, at some point they're going to say, give it a rest, pest. No, 
I am not going to buy your products. I am not going to help you in this business. Even worse, they could actually tell her, you have to get out of this. This is not good for you. And based on what we know about cults and MLMs, they, the operators of the cult or the MLM will tell you to cut off your connection with anyone who doesn't support you in, her, in your business. So you do have something to lose from it. Potentially, you could be losing your friends and family. And I have a full-time job, so like if it doesn't work out, I'm still covered, you know. But totally. it doesn't hurt to try, you know. Totally. No, I like, think that's that. I was gonna say, I just think that's really important. I think a lot of people they hold themselves back from that fear, right? That fear of failure. And your perspective is like, why would I assume just because someone else didn't succeed at something doesn't mean that no one succeeds? I think that's powerful because so many people look at this industry and think only a small percentage of people are successful, the 1%, right? Well, according to the video that we just did yesterday, and it was actually about this same MLM, Monet, by the way, um, we did the math and we found that it wasn't even 1% who were successful. It was 0.0001%. So it's just very misleading to try to frame this business as a business where a large majority of the people will have success because it's just the opposite actually and the numbers don't lie they always say well i can't do that i'm not the, like only one percent of people can be successful but what if you're that one percent like why do you assume that you yeah. will be one of those people <laughs> like that's so silly to put yourself in the 98 percent. you know what i exactly. mean exactly like, i love that what do you think besides the community? Because I know you love that. But what has been one of your biggest, like, gratitude moments from this business? You're like, wow, I'm really freaking grateful because I learned this. Or today this happened to me. I don't There's know. no wrong answer. There's no wrong answer. So, like, for me personally, like, I think one of my biggest gratitude moments for for our business personally is the personal development. Like I'm grateful that I'm in an organization that requires me to constantly become a better version of me, right? Because that affects me in every area of my life, right? When I pour into myself and I do my personal development and I read and I yeah. journal and I'm, like, I do all that, I'm a better girlfriend, I'm a better leader, I'm a better coach. I'm just, my energy is different, right? So let's do a quick one too on, on what was just discussed. So the first thing that Hat Girl mentioned was gratitude moments. And if you actually look through MLM posts of people that are trying to sell or recruit, a recurring theme on their post is gratitude. And you'll see these people go into an essay on their Instagram captions, listing all of the different things that they're grateful for. And sure enough, the company is something that you're grateful for. So they really condition you to be grateful for being in the company and for being grateful, not for what the company necessarily does, but for the opportunity that it gives you. And I think, in my opinion, you're also encouraged to find things to be grateful for because it's a form of thought control and they're having you focus on the good aspects instead of focusing on everything. But for example, if you have a cut on your leg, I'm talking a big ass monster cut on your leg. Like for example, if you see in the day after tomorrow, the chick gets that big cut on her leg, that's the kind of cut I'm talking about here. Yeah. And you sit there and you're like, wow, I'm so grateful that my leg didn't break. You should still go get that shit checked out by a doctor. Just because your leg isn't broken, it could be infected. So instead of just sitting there being grateful about something, you have to really be thoughtful about it and critical and analytical. And then also, let's talk about professional development. So in the broad sense of the term professional development, there's nothing wrong with that. If you have been watching some of my other videos, you'll have picked up on the fact that I'm actually a teacher. And as a teacher, we have various professional developments through the school year. And we learn new instructional strategies, or we learn how to integrate new programs or technology. Some of those meetings are really great and really inspiring and motivating. And I can immediately go back to my classroom and implement those things. And Others might be a little bit more boring. It might just be a review of things we've learned before. The difference is when I'm doing those professional developments, I'm still guaranteed to be paid my salary for it. Even better, some professional developments that get scheduled outside of our normal contract hours, you might actually get paid to go to those. Or you might get paid for your airfare or your hotel fare if it's somewhere different. 
But with MLMs, you do a heck ton of professional development. And based off of what I've seen, and this is just my opinion now, their professional development isn't so much focused on building your professional skills or capacities as a business person, but it's more of an opportunity where the cults, I mean, MLMs, can get you to be vulnerable, share things uh, with, share things about yourself with them, keep you introverted, and keep you focused on your shortcomings. They keep you really focused on what you're not doing, and that shame is what keeps you in there. And then later, those cults, I mean, MLMs, will even use those personal things you shared against you. So if you mentioned... One of the reasons why I'm looking into this opportunity is because I have a heck ton of student debt. Then later, if you try to leave, they might tell you, well, you have all that debt. This opportunity is going to help you get rid of that debt. You're just not working hard enough. So they'll use those things against you to try to get you to stay. So it's very manipulative. Is there like a particular habit that you've acquired in the past maybe two, three weeks that you didn't have before? And you're like, Um, okay, I can see how this is going to change my life. (laughs) Well, my mindset is definitely changing. As you can tell, like remember a couple days when I was ranting to you about how Mm -hmm. discouraged I was and how I was feeling and you sent me all these voice notes, like just, you know, just encouraging me and telling me that I was on the right track. And you know what? Like, I don't hear that enough. So, you know, you're obviously, the top girl is so sweet. She's only been in there for a few weeks and already she was having some serious concerns. Then the hat girl did what Huns do best and sent a bunch of voice memos in which she was probably love bombing and telling her, no, you got this. You're amazing. You're perfect for this opportunity and convincing her to stay, which look, she stayed. She's here on Instagram live right now. And this is just me, but If a friend ever texted me to tell me that they're having trouble with something or they're having trouble with their job, I don't tell them what they should do or force them into anything. Uh, What I would do is I would ask them questions, see how they're feeling, and really try to give them time to vent so that hopefully they kind of will come up with their own solution through their own reflection. Maybe that's the teacher in me. I'm not the one living their life, so how the heck am I supposed to know what is the best decision for that person? That's the difference between a friend and an upline, I guess. To be fair, I'm not really sure if this chick is the upline or what exactly her relationship is, but I don't think she's sitting on this IG live just out of the goodness of her heart. That's so true. I I can basically ask anybody. (laughs) That's important because I know a big fear of yours is initially you were like, well, I don't know what to do and I'm not sure where to go from here. And so I know that you are really relieved when you step foot into this and recognize that not only are you learning, but you have tools and people constantly helping you the whole way through. I love that. Let me ask and you like, this. I also don't like know a lot about, you know, hair, skin products. And I'm like, like, I don't know anything, but okay, I'm willing to give it a try. You know? <laughs> You're so cute. Let but, me ask you this. I want to yeah. ask you what? was one of your biggest fears like what truly was it that was holding you back was it that you just you felt like you didn't know what to do that was one of them i didn't feel like i would get anywhere because of all those things people were telling me you know and it kind of another recurring theme in mlms and one of their recruitment tactics is to get you to talk about your fears and what's holding you back In my opinion, this is to make you seem more relatable to other potential customers or recruits because there's a high probability that the exact same fears that are holding you back are what's holding them back. So that's just making you seem more relatable and then it gives them the impression that, oh, if that person can do it, then so can I. When we know that no two people are going to have the same exact results. I've like put fear into my my head until I started like talking to everybody and actually, you know, engaging with all the other people in our group as well, because I've talked to them one on one as well, a couple of them. And like they've told me they've told me their stories and all the training videos that you guys send me and people talk about their stories. And I'm like, okay, they did it. You know, they were in like similar positions that I was in um, or worse, at least like. You know, like I heard your story and I'm like, okay, that's really empowering, you know? (laughs) 
Like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know why I can't do it. You know, I love that. I love that. And for anyone who's watching this right now, you know, maybe you maybe you have been watching someone on the sidelines, you know, maybe it's not even Jenica, maybe you just saw her building your business. And now because she's building your business, you're way more inclined to learn more about it. But your fear of the unknown or you have this story, this narrative that you're telling yourself, I can't do this. I'm not good enough that whatever, whatever it is, we all have different like limiting beliefs. I think the beauty of our industry is we teach you how to kind of reprogram your thoughts to believe in you. And like, I always say, I teach you how to like, take your power back. When I teach you how to think in a way where you believe in yourself, everything around you starts changing. We teach you how to reprogram your thoughts to believe in you. If that's not the cultiest thing that I've ever heard, I don't know what is, but hey, power to her for openly admitting that. But thought control is a huge red flag. First, they're reprogramming your thoughts to get you to believe in yourself, but what's going to happen next? Once they learn they can manipulate you, why would they stop? Right? Because confidence breeds more confidence and that breeds more momentum. And then things start happening all around you. What would be one piece of advice? Okay, so let's say someone's watching this right now. And they're like, okay, I get it. You're excited. You're changing. I see that you're growing. I just don't think this is for me whatever right what would be one piece of advice you would have for that person honestly everything takes patience but you know nothing happens overnight and you'll actually never know until you try <laughs> girl you you'll never know until you put hard work into something you know you can't just expect to sit here and have everything come to you you actually need to work for it you know i'm not gonna say like this is easy or anything like you have to put in put work into anything that you want to do or want to try and you know you just have to be willing to do it you have to be willing to try and willing to grow and you know that's like one of my advice and if it's like but you can work hard at something else and actually make money from it not just have the promise of making money in my opinion, I think you're better off not joining an MLM. If you are someone with a lower income, just trying your best to live within your means rather than losing the time, losing the energy, potentially losing some friends and family off of something that is in no way guaranteed. Another thing I realized was like when people see like how much the product, the, the product packs cost, like when they're signing up, like, you know, I was the same. I was like, holy shit, it's a lot of money. But you know what? Like, you'll make it back if, you know, if you put that hard work into it, right? So, again, the top girl is just the sweetest girl. I really like her a lot. And I love that she's being open and she's admitting the fact that, yeah, these products are a lot of money. So I'm just kind of curious and thinking about it. If she even is acknowledging that herself, I wonder how her friends and family are going to react to those prices as well. Because remember, in direct sales, network marketing, MLMs, whatever you want to call it, your primary customer base are those people that you know. So if something is too expensive for me, there's a really strong chance that it's going to be too expensive for the people in my immediate social circle. Totally. And on top of that, I hope you guys know, like when we, when you start your business, we don't have a buy-in, right? So you're not like, there's no buy-in, there's no monthly quote or anything like that. To start your business, all you're getting, like she said, is a product pack, which is just products for you to use. They're not, you're not like buying products to resell them. Like you're purchasing products because she can't talk about stuff she's not using. The reason why she's comfortable on camera sharing her results is because she has results, you know? Yeah. So just understand that the beauty of our industry is that unlike so many companies and I, I, every company is different. So always do your research, right? But what really stood out to me about our company and why I partnered with this company is that we don't have inventory. We don't have quotas. We don't have a monthly maintenance fee to maintain your business. It's very simple. The same way that you guys go on your story and talk about, you know, do you guys have Lululemon in Canada? Yeah, yeah, we do. Okay. Your Lululemons or your Starbucks or whatever the case may be. It's the same way that we talk about our hair care and skincare. The difference is we we get paid to do it. So I appreciate you coming on here with me and I'm so excited for what you're gonna build. I really have a problem when MLMers say that it's as simple as just talking about the products and sharing how great they are. That's very misleading. Um, it's not how, that is not how it works. Representatives from MLMs are not paid 
per post that they make the same way that an influencer would be. So a rep only gets paid when they've been able to sell that product or recruit someone into joining. So it is not the same thing as it's just as simple as posting about it. If all it took was to make a post and then you would make money, all of these MLMers and Hunbots would be freaking bajillionaires because they post a lot. So it's just not that easy. That's not how it works. Guys have questions, reach out, ask questions. We'll hop on a call. We'll go over them with you because all I can tell you is I was about to build a beastly organization. I work with thousands of women and there are certain people when they come in and they do the work, you recognize, okay, so she's going to build something. It's going to happen. That's not a maybe, that's a fact. So if you have a need, maybe that need is a community like it was for her. Maybe it's that you want to be around like-minded men and women. Maybe for you, you were like me. I just needed money. I was like, I don't care about any of this. I just need money. Can I make at least $200? Because if I can make at least $200, I'm game. You know what I mean? Like if that's you, whatever the case may be, just we have something for you here. There's a seat for you on this table and it's on you to reach out and ask the right questions to make sure there's the right fit for you. I appreciate you, baby girl. Thank you. <laughs> you too. Another thing was... Oh, God. I thought you were done. Go ahead. A lot of people say, oh, they don't have the time. Girl, oh. I work full time. I'm like in my office all day. Like you already know, I come home and I'm like, guys, I'm like exhausted. But you know, I need to do this. <laughs> That poor thing. She already is working a full-time job. She's coming home exhausted, but she's still going to be putting in lots of unpaid time, lots of money, lots of energy into this MLM. But this is just another reason how MLMs and cults are similar. You're so exhausted from everything that you're doing that all you can do is just keep chugging along and hoping for better results. And that exha exhaustion goes hand in hand with sleep deprivation. So you're not as sharp as you might be. You're not thinking as critically. And then when you pair that with all of the reprogramming that's happened in your mind, that's just making you more pliable and more moldable into being what they want you to be and staying in the company, even though you're not making money. So let's talk about that. How do you fit your business into your day before we pop off? Well, in the like morning... I usually like plan something at night, like right before bed, like a little bit of an overlay of what I want to do or what topic I want to talk about or who I want to target, you know, and then in the morning, like if like sometimes I don't have time, but in the morning I try to post something and I've been trying to get my face on camera a lot. Like you've been, <laughs> you've been telling me to uh, just so people can get familiar and, you know, get to know me and whatnot. Cause before this, I would never post my face on camera like actually talk to the camera like i just don't <laughs> i'm so proud of you <laughs> showing your face going live it's scary my first set of videos for youtube i was nervous and i didn't think i was ever going to feel comfortable enough to show my face but then i just did i didn't need to join an mlm to gain the confidence to do that it's just a natural part of trying something new over time, you get more comfortable and you take more risks. I just wish that this sweet girl would use her personality and her energy and put it into better things for herself. Come to YouTube, girl. Be a content creator. Make us videos showing what it's like to work at a mask factory. I would love to see that. That's crazy. You guys, if you're watching this right now or the replay, did you hear what she just said? I would never put my face on camera. She's doing a lie. Lies are scary. Especially your first few. I mean, now they're like the same. I don't even remember when I do lives anymore because I'm so I'm so used to them. But your yes. first few lives, they're scary. And like that's just a testament of how much growth you've had in like the last three weeks. So I think that's so freaking cool. Thanks, I really Jenny. do. I think it's cool. I think, I think that's a, where a lot of people trap themselves is because kind of like you, they're like, I'm never going to show my face on camera, so I can't do this, right? But you're like, well, I might not show my face on camera now, but if... I grow into the comfort to do it down the line, then maybe yeah, I will. Eventually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, eventually. Like, I've been getting more comfortable, like, just, you know, videotaping myself and, you know, little, like, I've been doing short video talks on camera, which is, like, you know, easing me into it. So, you know, that's that's another thing. I know a lot of people are uncomfortable with it, and I wasn't either, but, you know, here I am. <laughs> I love that. I just, I'm excited for the team that you're going to build, and I just hope that I can kind of be... I'm excited for the team that you are going to build. This statement pretty much shows that the point of this MLM is not to sell the products to customers. 
Rather, you're going to make money by recruiting other people to join below you. Or, in MLM speak, building your team is how they say recruiting. It's not even about the products. It's about how many people can you lure in. I just hope that I can kind of be here as a carrot for anyone who maybe you're not really sure if the direct sales industry is for you. Like, I just love to be living, breathing proof. You guys, I started my business with no expectations to build a business. I literally wanted to make an extra 200 to $500 because I really was so tired. I was so tired of looking at my account before grocery shopping. Like, that was it for me. I had to check my checking before going grocery shopping. Like, I hated that feeling. Or when we would go on vacation before going to eat, I would check the menu at the restaurant to see the prices at the dinner so that way I can... Hang on a second. If you're that hard up for money, then don't go on vacations. Maybe just try not to live above your means. Plan my lunches. Like that wasn't life to me. You know what I mean? So my goal, I didn't want to, I wasn't like, I want to quit my job. I was like, I want to make a few hundred dollars. And it's turned into not only did I match my day job income, I'm qualified for the free car. I've paid over $20,000 in debt. I qualified for the free trips. So like I'm breathing living proof that this business doesn't always turn out how you initially start it because sometimes you don't even recognize what you're capable of until you begin building and you pick your head up one day and you go, oh my God. I did this. Like, I'm doing this. And my story has just begun. Her story has just begun. So just know that no matter where you are in life, if you're unhappy, like, there's something for you. There is something out there that can change that for you. So, Jonica, I appreciate your time. I'm so excited for your journey. I cannot wait for you to be doing these lives with your team. And I can't wait to, you know, introduce this to your following and have them come join us. Thanks, girl. You've been such a great help. Like, thank you for everything. <laughs> We're just getting started, baby girl. All right, I will talk to you soon, okay? All right, see you. Bye. Hat girl wasn't wrong. If you're unhappy, make a change, for sure. But do your freaking research. Find out what type of job, what type of opportunity is going to be a good fit for you. Be educated about those financial choices that you're making. Because if you're somebody who really is so desperate for some extra money... You don't want to be getting yourself into a position where this opportunity will actually be taking you in the other direction, which is possibly getting you into debt. Thank you for staying and watching the video. I hope you liked it. If you do, please let me know in the comments and let me know what you think about Monate's tactics. Do they seem a little culty to you or is it just me? Thanks and see you next time.